world where we can solve the world's most challenging problems with computers that are millions of times faster than anything we have today, or where we can create new materials with unique properties that could revolutionize many industries, or a world where we can develop new medical treatments that could cure diseases that are currently incurable. This is the world that Bose-Einstein condensates, or BECs, promise us. They are a fascinating state of matter in which atoms are cooled to extremely low temperatures, near absolute zero. But what is absolute zero, and what is so absolute about it? Imagine temperature as how fast or slow the tiny particles and things are moving. When things are hot, like a boiling kettle, these particles move really fast. When it's cold, like ice cream in the freezer, they move more slowly. Absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature, where these tiny particles stop moving completely. It's like freezing everything in its tracks. In the real world, it's incredibly cold, at around minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Scientists use it as a reference point for temperature, like a starting point for their temperature scales. At these temperatures, the atoms lose their individual identities and become a single unit. This gives BECs unique properties, such as the ability to flow without friction and to tunnel through barriers. They are still a relatively new area of research, but have the potential to revolutionize many fields, including quantum computing, materials science, and medicine. In this episode, we will explore the world of BECs. We will learn about how they are created, their unique properties, and their potential applications. Let's begin with creating such a matter at such an unbelievable condition. Creating a Bose-Einstein condensate is a delicate process requiring cooling atoms to extremely low temperatures, near absolute zero. There are a few different ways to create a BEC. One common method is called evaporative cooling. Here, atoms of a gas are trapped in a magnetic field. The atoms are then cooled by removing the hottest atoms from the trap. The hottest atoms are the ones that are most likely to escape from the trap as they have higher energies. So by removing them, the remaining atoms are cooled down as the average energy goes down. Another common method is called laser cooling. Here, lasers are used to slow down atoms. It works by exciting the atoms and then causing them to emit photons in a specific direction. This emission causes the atoms to recoil in the opposite direction, which slows them down. Once the atoms have been cooled to a sufficiently low temperature, they can be trapped in a magnetic field or optical trap. These traps prevent the atoms from escaping, and it also helps to keep them cold. These syntheses are not easy. Let's discuss two major challenges of creating BECs. One is cooling the atoms to extremely low temperatures, for obvious reasons. Another challenge is keeping the atoms trapped once they have been cooled. We must gain something for the endeavor. But how would we benefit from the research if we did not know the properties of BECs? Bose-Einstein condensates have a number of unique properties that make them very interesting to scientists and engineers. We shall discuss some of the most important properties. First, we have quantum coherence. BECs are quantum coherent, meaning that the atoms in a BEC are all in the same quantum state. This gives it unique properties, such as the ability to interfere with each other and to tunnel through barriers. Second is superfluidity. It means that they can flow without friction, literally like we usually assume the world is, in physics in classes 9 and 10. Jokes apart, this is because the atoms are all in the exact same state and they move together as a single unit. If there is no relative motion, friction is out of the picture. Third, we have long coherence times. This practically means that they can stay in the same quantum state for a long time. This makes them ideal for use in quantum computing and other applications where long-lived quantum states are needed. They are pretty heavy terms. I have a podcast series on the same called Quantum Bugs. It can clarify your doubts about these terms in detail. In addition to the three properties listed above, BCs also have a number of other interesting qualities. Fourth is atom lasers. BCs can create atom lasers similar to common optical lasers, but emit atoms instead of photons. These lasers have a number of potential applications, including atom lithography and precision measurements. Fifth 
is matter wave interference. BCs can create matter wave interference patterns. These patterns can be used to study matter's wave-like properties and develop new types of microscopes. Finally, we have the quantum simulators. They are used to study the behavior of quantum systems that are too complex to be solved by computers. After all the studies and analyses of BECs, we have found many real-world applications for them. There had to be some applications, otherwise, who would fund the research? Quirks aside, BECs are still a relatively new area of research, but they have the potential to be used in a wide range of applications, including Futuristic quantum computing. BECs can be used to build quantum computers that are much faster than traditional computers and could be used to solve problems that are currently intractable by normal computers. There is a detailed video on quantum computing in the podcast series called Quantum Bugs on our channel. Age old, materials science. BCs can be used to create new materials with unique properties, such as ones that are stronger, lighter, and more conductive than existing materials. Evergreen medicine. They are been used to develop new medical treatments, such as direct delivery of drugs to specific cells in the body or to image tissues at a very high resolution. BEC-based microscopes could be used to image tissues at a very high resolution, which could lead to earlier and more accurate diagnosis of diseases. Other BEC-based sensors could be used to detect pollutants in the environment with unprecedented sensitivity, or to develop new types of medical devices that can monitor patients' health in real time. One of the most exciting things about them is that they are still a relatively new area of research. This means that there is still a lot to learn about them and their potential applications. Scientists and engineers are constantly discovering new and innovative ways to use BECs. In addition to these specific applications, they also have the potential to lead to breakthroughs in many other fields, such as precision metrology, atom lithography, and quantum sensors. Overall, the future of BEC research is very bright. The next episode will be on a rare variety of matter called, well, stay tuned for the sixth state of matter. <laughs>